Okay, you ready for chapter five of The Empty Envelope by Ron Ray? Again, this was published in 1992. I don't know why I keep forgetting. No, I'm sorry, 1998. I'm going to boil some water, Ruth Rose said. My grandfather used to collect stamps. He showed me how to steam them off envelopes. Ruth Rose ran water into the tea kettle and set the kettle on the burner. Then she turned on the stove. The kids sat and stared at it. Sure is taking a long time to boil, Dink muttered, brushing his fingertips over the sunflower stamps. Suddenly, steam began whistling out of the kettle spout. Dink handed Ruth Rose the empty envelope. Ruth Rose held the envelope so the stamps were right over the kettle spout. In a few seconds, moisture began gathering on the stamps. Then the stamps began to peel away from the envelope. So if you look here, here's the stamp. So you put steam from like a, a hot kettle and you put it over the stamp and the steam makes the stamp peel away. So then all you have to do is you have to go and then it comes off the envelope undamaged. So if you get any letters in the mail with a stamp on it, you should ask your mom or dad to try that and uh, with steam, but make sure you ask them because it could burn you. Cool, Josh said. I feel like a spy. Ruth Rose shut off the stove. Using the tip of a toothpick, she removed the three sunflower stamps from the envelope. Hidden beneath the stamps, covered with cellophane, was a smaller stamp. Cellophane is kind of like plastic wrap. It was blue. In the center of the stamp was a picture of an old-fashioned airplane. The plane was flying upside down. Dink removed the cellophane. It's an old stamp, he said. Josh poked a finger at the stamp. The dumb thing is printed wrong, he muttered. What's the big deal about an upside down airplane stamp? So here's the picture that goes along with this page. See there? There's the, is it upside down? The airplane's upside down, but the stamp is not upside down. Look, it only costs 24 cents. I'd be curious as to what year that's from when it costs 24 cents. Ruth Rose studied the stamp. Maybe it's valuable, she said. My grandfather has a stamp that's worth $200. I wonder if Doris Duncan knew this was here, Dink said. The kids looked at each other, then they stared at the little blue stamp. We should go to the library and look at the book about stamps, Ruth Rose said finally. Dink glanced at the kitchen clock. We better make it fast. Doris Duncan will be back in less than an hour. Dink slipped the stamp inside the empty envelope and stuck all five envelopes under his shirt. Okay, let's go, he said. Ruth Rose went to the bottom of the hall stairs. Mom, I'm going to the library, she yelled. They hurried through the living room, out the door, and down Ruth Rose's front sidewalk. As they started up Woody Street, Josh nudged Dink with his elbow. Look, there's some weird guy watching us, he pointed at a dark car parked on the other side of the street. Uh oh Ruth Rose looked. What guy? They all looked. There was no one in the car. Come on, Dink said. We're running out of time. The kids ran all the way to the library. When they charged up the front steps, they were out of breath. Mrs. McElroy looked up and as they burst through the door. Slow down, kids, she said. Why are your faces red as, red as beets? Hi, Mrs. McElroy, Ruth Rose panted. Can you show us a book about stamps? So here's the picture of them running into the library. All and then there's Miss McElroy. So they ran in. It's kind of a cool picture. Let's see what they look like. Can you please go? Thank you. What kind of stamps, Ruth Rose? United States, foreign. We have many books about stamps, dear. Do you have one about stamps with pictures of upside down airplanes, Dink asked? Mrs. McElroy smiled. You mean inverts? She said stamps that were printed upside down by mistake. She walked to a shelf and returned with a big flat book. You should find your stamp in here, Mrs. McElroy said. Thanks a lot, Dink said. Dink carried the book over to the corner table. He set it down, looked around, then pulled the envelopes from inside his shirt. He carefully removed the blue stamp and placed it on the table. There's a zillion upside down stamps in here, Josh said, rifling through the pages. How do we find ours? Try the index, Dink said, under Jenny. Josh turned to the index in the back of the book. He ran his finger down to the J section. Hmm, 
No Jenny, he said, trying to look under airplanes, Ruth Rose suggested. Oh, try looking under airplanes, Ruth Rose suggested. Good idea. Josh backed up a few pages to the A's. He found a listing for airplanes for A and turned to page 329. And there it was, a picture of the little blue stamp. Below the picture was a drawing of an airplane, only bigger. The caption read, Curtis Jenny single engine airplane. Hey, Josh said, Jenny's the airplane. Silently, the kids read the paragraph about the stamp. So there you go. There's the page in the book. And there it is. There's the upside down airplane. Get a little closer. Oh my gosh, Ruth Rose yelled. Mrs. McElroy tapped her pencil on the desk. Ruth Rose, please, she said. Dink picked up the little Jenny stamp. His fingers were shaking. This is worth $50,000, he whispered. Oh, man. And that's where Chapter 5 ends. So now we know the motive behind these very important envelopes. The stamp is worth $50,000. So I'd like you to think about why would an upside-down mistake stamp be worth so much money? I mean, it's a, it's a stamp that was printed upside-down on accident. So why would that be worth so much money? So you can think about that or ask a mom or dad or someone living in your house. And, uh, and then we can talk about it tomorrow. Okay, bye-bye.